Dr. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I found myself rather taken aback. <laughs> I saw tidy houses in war-torn Afghanistan. Are those my surgical needles? I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. Was that my supper? Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Hmm, I set it aside for this evening. And for that I am grateful. Is that my bed? Watson, since you've proven yourself a master of observation, might I ask you to apply your skills to a more pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts of today's newspapers. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. Medically speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. Let us see what the postman brought today. Local gossip, all of it uninteresting. Your order from Barnes Bookshop has arrived, Doctor. Barnes insists on delivering the books to our door, even though we could easily walk to his shop. That's good service. Another letter from Werner. I never reply, but they keep coming. I don't see the Strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. A missing paper cannot be a coincidence. That's preposterous. My dear fellow, life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. Well, life used your newspaper to wipe its posterior, so after that unpleasant discovery this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the Strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick. Who? No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. cactus spine. If it gets in your skin, it's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. You were mistaken, Dr. Watson. The paper was indeed dirtied, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. See, Watson? The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. Poison? You? That's madness. Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand here. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. I just sold my last paper. Glassed. Then why are you still here? Boss pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here? Nothing gets past me, mister. Then tell me, did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Hmm. Like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. What do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Dr. Watson. Cool! Now I can take the day off. Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared, because I wasn't. I had to protect the merchandise. And all I could see was him kneeling at your door. Which way did he go? Not sure. I was distracted by customers. Sorry. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books. Up to his chin, they were. Never heard of a well-read assassin. Looks can deceive, hence the appeal of disguises. 
All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears, if you have more shillings. Come now, Mr. Holmes. Get the stand. Murdered? Get yes, the copy of the stand work, here. He also has his scruples. Not every pawn knows it's part of a game. Impressive stature, strong gaze. I think this man deserves a knighthood. Really, Holmes? How can you be so sure? On rare occasions, Watson, it can suffice to trust one's gut. The weather is dreary, isn't it? To be fair, Hello my flowers there. could use the rain. What's your name? <laughs> Lily. I know. Not very original. Hardly imagine anything more macabre. So, Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good boy? Do you even have enemies that would want to kill you? Okay, perhaps from Cordona. Mr. Barnes, a word. <gasps> oh, for goodness sake. Who, uh, who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now will you please... Mr. Holmes, golly, I did not see you come in. Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am... Deep in the weeds with work. How about we uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. No, really deep in the weeds with, uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book. Just take it and pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? 
You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. The ladder is broken recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. Basics of cryptoanalysis, cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. An improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. In the language of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. The finest view London has to offer. Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses. Our national emblem. God save the Queen. It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. The pot is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. A familiar spine. Is this what I found in my dustbin? Anything tickle your fancy, Mr. Holmes? Mrs. Fleming, you look particularly lovely today. Is there a reason? Does a woman need a reason to look or feel beautiful? No, but your distant look suggests you seek one man's gaze in particular. Who told you that? Nobody. Merely a keen eye and some simple deduction. Well, I'll kindly ask you to keep your keen eye to yourself, Mr. Holmes.
I don't know anything about this, sorry. One of these things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. Though you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. Are you sure you're asking the right person? I'm just a flower seller. Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No, not really. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then, we've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would etch such longing onto his face. What do you make of the flowers in Barnes' shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh, I hope you're right. Hmm. I, uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Mr. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I I can't hear you very well from behind the door. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalogue and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. 
I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured, we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. So, you know what happened, then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy too, and when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You had an issue of the Strand here all along? Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh, no. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and... and, uh... Yes, yes, OK. Just give me the paper. Come, Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. Well, that was an utter waste of time. An assassination did seem rather unlikely. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Something you wish to say, Doctor? No. Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition. And that perhaps, if ill-applied... I see things that are not there. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. Doesn't have to mean anything. So it seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. Truly? Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona, a patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. I said I knew just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery, nor the story to launch my writing career, but it's brilliant. Let's go. Oh, good. Well, his house is nearby. Come. <laughs> 